Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys about something that came up in the video comments uh, a little while back. Someone had said, hey Jason, well if a person isn't going to do powerlifting or something where they have to max out, wouldn't something like a 3 rep max be better for real world activity and sports and everything else? It, it just doesn't seem worth the risk to do a 1 rep max. And I kind of have to laugh there because, I mean, right off the bat, that weight you see me doing there for a single on my ramp up, I could do that for 3 reps. That's probably a 3 rep max. Now, you see uh, shortly after... Here, here in a bit, because it rotates through some of the different maxes, me do 50 pounds heavier for a true one rep max. What, what's the difference in terms of risk? Like, do you really think 502 pounds, taking it to a three rep max, is suddenly safer than a 552? I mean, there's 50 pounds difference, but we're over 500 pounds. Realistically speaking, and I'm going to get into the problems in a minute of why it's actually more dangerous... Realistically speaking, do you really think doing 90% of the heaviest weight you can possibly lift taken basically to failure? Because that's what a 3 rep max is. The last one's going to grind. Do you really think that's safer? That Like if something goes wrong, if you're capable of lifting 550 pounds if, if you were to actually max out versus doing 500 for a triple which the calculators say you should be able to do, that's probably an all-out three rep max. If something goes wrong and you mess up, do you really think 500 versus 550 is going to make a difference in if something tears in your body? Okay. And that's the problem with this, is that people are like, well, a maximum weight is really, really heavy. Uh, a three rep max taken all the way to its limits is really, really heavy. A 5 rep max taken to his limits is really, really heavy. Because what would a 5 rep max be for someone like me right here? This is this is my max on the box squat. 552 right there. Okay, that's a max. That's a 1 rep max. Now notice that it didn't necessarily look ugly. It didn't look any worse than 502. Did, did they really look different? Okay. And had I taken that 502 to an all-out triple, do you really think the last rep would have been as pretty as that one rep max was? I bet you it wouldn't have been. Do you think once we start getting 500 pounds on the bar that your body really cares about that next 50 pounds if something's going to snap or not because your form broke down really bad? I mean, realistically, I understand that people are talking about really heavy weight when you're really weak. Okay, I get that. That you're thinking that it's significantly lighter. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you can do it for five reps, it's not going to be a really heavy weight. For a novice, if you're an athlete or someone who's built a strength base, your five rep max is probably a really heavy weight. And here's the thing. You see some of these maxes, these one rep maxes, and think about how pretty they are still, right? I mean, they're, they're a little grindy. Form breaks down a little bit on some of them, okay? But they're not horrifically bad form. Do you honestly think with any one of those lifts, if I did 10% less weight and tried to get three or four reps with it, that the last rep wouldn't be ugly? Like, do, do you think that it's not going to be really, really ugly in terms of form breakdown? Of course it will be. Do you know why? When you're calm and you're collect, because I'm talking about correct matches, guys. When I talk about a one rep max, I'm not talking about a bunch of kids, high school kids screaming and yelling with no supervision and screaming all you and bouncing a weight off their chest and lifting their ass in the air on the bench or them, you know, doing a really, really horrible taco squat and the other guy's screaming at them, you know, so that they, they keep pushing like a bunch of ass clowns. I'm talking about actually coming in and hitting the heaviest single you can hit, pushing with all that you have while focused and tight. Okay. I'm talking about training maxes. They're still the heaviest weight you can lift and sometimes you miss them. But when I miss one of these lifts, what happens? They just go down smooth and pretty. I just missed the lift. Why? Because we're not hyped up and jamming to really loud music and taking a bunch of stems and pre-workouts and ammonia salts. I'm just coming in and lifting the heaviest weight that I can handle calmly. And if I can't grind through, I miss the lift. 
What's the difference? We're tight. You are more likely to get hurt failing an all-out 3, 4, or 5 rep max than you are from a 1 rep max. You are more likely to get hurt. Why? Because the fatigue accumulates. When you do a single rep and you're, you're focused, you are braced correctly. You usually have the bar in a good position. You've stabilized yourself. You can really concentrate on the movement. And when you miss it, the weight tends to go straight down. In other words, when you miss a one rep max bench, the bar tends to come straight back down on your chest. Okay? You don't miss it and then the bar comes back down to your upper chest or towards your neck. Because if you hit the safety pins or a spotter helps you even then, you might actually get hurt. You actually have a risk of injury when that happens, when it drifts up over your face and you fail. Even with safeties in place, it's easier to tear stuff. On a squat, when you've developed really excessive forward lean because you're straining on the third, fourth, or fifth rep, you get pulled forward. You're more likely to pull something in your back. Same thing with the deadlifts on reps. Except on deadlifts, you can concentrate and reset every rep. But even then, you tend to just go straight down in a braced position. When we're braced and we're tight and we're keeping the bar uh, in the correct bar path and we just miss it because we're not strong enough, and it just hits the safeties or whatever, we're usually fine. Or on a deadlift, it just goes straight down. You very rarely get hurt. You're, it's, it's, when I say rarely, I'm talking very, very, very rare. Unless you have overuse injuries already accumulating, in which case that's just going to be the thing that hurts you. If not, something else would have got you next week. Okay, overuse injuries because your training programming is bad. Or... Drug abuse has caused certain tendons to weaken. Okay, that can happen with the wrong drugs, right? That's your concerns. They're safer. So we come back over to, well, you know, don't they apply the same to sports? No. Which requires you to produce more force production? 550 or 500 pounds? I don't care how many times you lift 500 pounds. It takes more force to quickly move and grind through and lock out 550 pounds, or in this case, like you see me there, 625. Well, that one's not. That's 585. But some of the deficit deadlifts here are up to 625. It takes more force to move 625 than it does 550. It takes more force to move 550 than 500. If you're trying to develop as much force production as possible for a sport with your heavy work, one rep maxes are number one, safer, is already broke down. Number two, they develop better intramuscular coordination because you are moving against a maximum weight. Okay, if we're doing maxes, we're not doing them to accumulate fatigue and build hypertrophy. We do rep work for that. In fact, what do you see me do? When I'm doing work that I'm using just to build muscle mass to improve my strength potential and performance, what do I do? 10, 15, 20 reps? I don't play with threes. I play with fives. Right, we're, we're going to do volume. When we are lifting heavy, we are lifting heavy to learn to produce force maximally. To get against these awkward big weights, and you guys see me doing a lot of different barbells and different bands and chains and different things so that we have to learn to go through all these different positions. Now, if an athlete really wants to have real world strength, why don't you learn how to squat with three completely different bars to a max? Right, like you see me doing. Take a cambered bar, a buffalo bar, a safety squat bar. They all pull you in a different direction. Max out on all three of those. Get good at maxing on three different squat positions like that with a different center of gravity. All right, which one's going to carry What's going to carry over better to, to something like football or a contact sport or anything where you're talking about real world strength? Well, the ability to hit those different angles. Okay, that's why we do all the different angles. We want to be strong at every position. We want to be strong and be able to produce maximum force and learn to brace ourselves correctly at different awkward angles. Makes you injury resistant. Makes you stronger. That builds real world strength. And you know what? Force production is strength. The ability to produce maximum force. You are going to learn to actualize more strength against a heavy one rep max than you are a three or a five. It's going to carry over better to sports. The argument is that doing threes and fives and other stuff can, can build more fatigue for more hypertrophy. But let's come back to the point. We aren't maxing out for hypertrophy. We're not maxing out to build muscle. 
it can help but we're maxing out to to learn to produce maximum force against a really heavy external object which could be a person or anything else actually okay when we do speed work we're doing it to develop maximum explosiveness right we train different performance elements don't try to mix and match your stuff that's part of the problem with that mindset too of well you know um, but if we do it with vibes we can get more fatigue get more hypertrophy well go do hypertrophy work if you want more hypertrophy i do if you want to develop maximum force production for a burst of power a heavy single produces it better it trains it better right there's other things we can do for muscular endurance that work better in the weight room than those are really really heavy okay this is better for everyone all right guys well that's really all i have to say on that today i hope it's been informative and i will talk to you guys next time